Okay, so uh, this is going to be the neutral review. Um, neutrals in this game are really, really, really well designed. Uh, they help fill a lot of gaps. Even the common ones are good. There's not a lot of like, oh, this card's here because we want to say we have 8,000 cards or because we don't want our rarity draws to get in. You know, we want to make sure you put more money into our packs. Like, I have seen a large majority of the cards get played um, at the highest levels of the play. Like, maybe not in tournament, but in the top tiers of the ladder, you'll still see a wide variety of cards. Um, so keep that in mind as I go through. Uh, some of these in the current mode, we have three of everything, so maybe some of these don't see play then, but it's worth mentioning. Now, the first thing you need to know is that in Duelist, you start with two mana or three mana if you're going second, and it can easily go up to four very quickly or five um, due to how mana tiles are. Because of that, one drops are in a weird position. So I'm just going to say for right now that in general, um, these either are very obvious, like this goes in Mechazord decks, uh, which I think work best in maybe like Abyssian, I hear Magmar, um, possibly Songhai? Sounds like a backup plan? I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise you have to have like something in mind, like why do I want a 2-1 flyer? Like that's kind of like a 2 mana removal spell with delay that might just do nothing. So for 1 mana, getting a 2-1 is kind of a crummy stat line. So in zoo decks where you want to spam stuff out and give them buffs because other things give them buffs, these can make sense. Otherwise, you're probably not playing the neutral one drops. Uh, so again, if you're doing some weird artifact deck, maybe this makes sense because getting it a lot of health is good. So like Lionar artifact, there's a four drop artifact. You drop this guy, play that in the next turn. Now he's a two six. You divine bond him. Now he's a you know two eight or sorry an eight six. Maybe that makes sense. Um, Opening Gambit, deal 2 damage to a nearby ally, this gains plus 2 plus 0. This could make sense in Magmar, because they have creatures that, uh, if they're damaged, you can buff them. Um, and this gets, you know, 4 attack then. That's not bad for a 1-drop, but it's got to live and do something. So, how are you going to keep it alive? Well, Magmar has the ability to rush this out. Oh, well, maybe that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, Mobius. I'm pretty sure it didn't do this when I first saw it. And, by the way, that attack animation is just one of the coolest. Um, spend your remaining mana. This gains plus one, plus one for each mana. Spend airdrop. Airdrop is overrated. Do not think oh, I can put it anywhere. Is really cool. Um, it can kind of be interesting that like you can with this uh, and this gobble up the mana tiles right at the beginning of the game. But other than that, um, just be careful. Oh, well, yeah, you'd have to actually mostly use this because this can gobble up mana tiles and then you play this last. Um, but. Yeah, overall, I have no idea. There might, uh, the cool thing, I guess, about this is it's flexible. So, like, wherever you play it on curve, it works. So, it's probably worth trying. Um, I just haven't tried it. Uh, I already talked about Planner Scout. Airdrop is really, 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 really situational, especially on a 2-1. So, again, it's mostly for Zoo. Like, you drop this behind them, and then all your Zoo effects buff it. And you're like, oh, I've got, like, a 3-2 behind you with Provoke. Haha, -ha, you can't run. Um, this guy's good. Uh, prevent damage dealt by spells until your next turn. You running into a lot of Songhai? Play this guy. Uh, Vanar, maybe. Um, Lionar, maybe. Uh, Abyssian, not so much, but still maybe. I, it, it's not a terrible tech card. It, it depends very much on the meta, but remember he exists. And 1-3 is a good stat line. Um, it keeps him alive, so if you've got stuff that can buff your minion, uh, that's good. And being low attack actually protects, protects your two drops in matchups like against Magmar. Uh, where they're trying to kill your lowest attack minion, and you'd much rather they remove this than, you know, some 6-drop that's got 2-attack. This is not very good, I gotta be honest. It's mainly like, oh, I can stop Magmar from killing my stuff pretty easily, and even then, I'm not sure you play this. So, again, Zoo deck, it's kind of okay, but there's better ways to get Provoke. Uh, there's a 2-drop that gives a 1-4 Provoke, so you'd usually rather play that. Absolutely not a bad card. Mostly in control from what I've seen. Don't overrate replacing, but it's an Arcanist. Oh, I was just rambling about how I don't believe in these, and I still don't. Um, but an additional replace can really help you hunt for, like, whatever you need. So, and a good half-decent body, never bad. Uh, Headhunter. When you play a minion with opening gambit, this game's plus two plus oh. I've seen some interesting combos with this, and if you think your deck has a lot of opening gambit, then maybe he's worth trying. Uh, I generally, he's a build around though. You've really got to already have a deck that's kind of going in that direction, and then you go, oh, you know what, I can throw him in. Uh, Azure Horn Shaman. 
mostly in Lionar decks because he can make this sick uh, or in Zoo decks where he can just make your Zoo field nearly unkillable. Excuse me. Blood Tear Alchemist. Good tech card. I run one of currently in my Spell High deck. Um, I've run him as one of in other decks. Uh, that deal one damage just to anything anywhere solves a surprising amount of problems. Uh, it gets rid of like Heart Seekers, that one one for one range that uh, Songhai has. It gets rid of things that just quite won't die. It also deals damage to generals and helps remove artifacts because dealing damage to a general will get rid of their artifact. And in rare cases, you actually even damage yourself with this, although that's pretty rare. Um, so not a bad card. Deals damage, double damage to minions. I I really don't know when you play this. 4-1 is such a weird stat line. Um, and double damage to minions is such a weird removal, quasi-removal effect, given that it's going to die almost immediately, barring some rare circumstances. I have to say, I don't know. Crossbones, 3-1 Dying Witch. This card, uh, the, the next card your opponent plays costs one more. Um, now that this is a Dying Wish, this, this used to have a different effect, I'm pretty sure. It was like kill large creatures when you play me. Um, I think this is playable, especially in something like Abyssian, where you can keep recurring that Dying Wish, and you like Dying Wish synergy, and you like your stuff dying anyways, um, and you can force it to die when you want to. So, or maybe even in, like, Magar Magmar, where you can duplicate this card. I think it has potential. I haven't messed with it yet. Dream Gazer. Uh, when you replace this card, summon it out of space behind your general, deal two damage to your general. I do think this has use. You have to be careful with it. You have to build around it. It's not as easy to use as it looks. You're like, oh, free card! Cool! Eh? Um, it's, and 2-2 two, two for 2 is kind of an odd stat line, and the fact it always summons behind you is also weird. But there are times where this can be very useful. Like, for example, in Songhai, you can then give it haste and buff it to Kingdom Come, and it can just be, you know, another finisher that's easier to get out because you can get it out for free. Thermal Shroud's very good. I run it as a two of them in my Spell High deck. It gives you a body, and it does a Dispel. That's always good, especially for two mana. So often this is just hardcore removal where you, like, Dispel something, and, oh, that now dies. So always worth considering. He was a staple in a lot of rush de uh, like aggro decks where, you know, your curve, you top out at like four. Um, so you run three of this guy just to help burn them down even faster because he deals three da damage to both generals. And then people don't love attacking into him because you don't want to do it with your general because you know they're burned because they're running this guy. But you don't want to do it with your creature because it's probably trading up. It It's it's a decent card. Ghost Links, uh, teleport a nearby minion to a random space. I... Maybe there's something cool with this. I don't know. But I gotta say, I don't... I, you know, I think someone ran it in a zoo deck as kind of a way to, like, get rid of provoke creatures at two. Like, they drop a provoke in front of themselves to try and save themselves, and you drop this next to it, and you teleport to a random space, and it's probably good enough that you still win. But two, two for two is kind of... Like, these are really good effects. This is maybe a good effect, which makes me very suspicious of it. Golem Metal are just, if you want to try Golem Tribal, you play this guy. I think Golems are actually pretty good in either Magmar or Lionar. Um, so if you're already playing some Golems, normally you play them because they're budget, but then consider playing this as a two drop, because cheating them out earlier makes them even better. This can be a three of in any deck. Healing in this game is really, really good. Uh, because your general will almost always be attacking every turn to help clear the board or to help beat down the opponent general, healing is a big deal. So this is basically, especially in the early game, it undoes one attack. And this heals anything. So you can heal an enemy unit in rare cases where that's useful, or you can heal an allied unit. So for example, I already dropped one of these. It's on the board. It attacks, clears an enemy creature, you know, something like this. Um, and now the enemy general can kill it. Well, then I heal it, and now they can't kill it again because it's back up to three health. It's outside of general clear range. Very, very good card. Always good. Um, this one's okay. Uh, I, range minions are all right. It's two bodies. There are cases where you might want to use this, again, kind of popular in zoo decks. Otherwise, not so much. Very popular in spell high, as like a one or two of, um, because it just lets you go. Like It's like, oh, I have to answer that, or he's probably going to murder me. Um, but spell high curve is so low, you don't have to run it. So, you know, it is an arcanist. That's nice. But other than that, eh. Piercing Mantis, mostly played in Spell High or is sort of a, like, I don't have, again, if you're in budget mode and don't have everything, I don't have the premium removal, so I drop this guy and then I can buff him and move an attack and then threaten uh, AoE removal. 
Um, not bad at all. I ran him in quite a few budget decks uh, back in the day. Primus Fist, another, like, can go in almost any deck. Being able to buff your allied minions, uh, one attack lets them trade up, and automatic three of Zoo decks. If you're not sure what to do, try running him. Decent, very good in Divine Bond. Uh, otherwise, not awful. Again, I ran him a lot in my budget decks because I just needed something to help keep me alive and slow down the aggro of whatever was going on at the time. Uh, that said, don't have to run him. I think he's good in Magmar. I think he's good in Lionar. Um, he's okay in Vanar, I believe, because they've also got some good buffs. Vitruvian, yeah, decent. Uh, it's mostly Abyssian and Songhai, but I think care less about him. Rust Crawler, great tech card. If artifacts start becoming the meta, use this. Not only does it destroy a random artifact, but it's a 1-4. So it's probably going to survive and hit the general next turn and then take another durability off all their other artifacts that are still equipped um, if you're, like, I, I, you might look at this and go, eh, that's not great. No, trust me, this is worth running if you're worried about artifacts. Um, granted, there are, just, I'll mention it now, one of the best ways to remove artifacts in this game is lots of pinging effects. So, both Songhai and, um, Abyssian have creatures or artifacts that give, like, lots of little instances of one damage, and every time you deal damage to your opponent, they lose durability. So that's another way to remove artifacts, um, which is why you may not see as much of this, because they're running other cards that pull double duty. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. I don't know if there's maybe some cool mill strategy with this, where you like buff it through the roof and hit them for eight and steal their cards. Um, I don't know. I don't think this effect existed when I played, so I can't really say. Skyrock Golem. Uh, as far as Golems go, he's not great. So if you're running Golems, eh, probably skip on him. Veil Hunter. Uh, once you range, I think this is not very good. Um, don't play it. Wings of Mechazor. If you're playing Mechazor, this is good. If you're not playing Mechazor, this is still okay. This is one of those ones that's like, oh yeah, this is still playable even if you're not playing Mechazor, but you need to know what you're doing with it. Again, like Budget Divine Bond. Uh, Arcane Lord Master has a ton of random co uh, combos and tech uses. This will steal the last copy of any spell played. So if your opponent played some really cool spell last turn and you want to steal it, you play this guy, steal it, and use it against them. Um, or yes, of course, you copy your own really good spells and kill the opponent with some crazy combo. And he's a 3-1, so obviously he's kind of good for burn, and he's an Arcanist, so he technically fits in that thing, although I don't believe in Arcanist, so there you go. Blazehound. Um, I... A 4-3 for 2 is like something that um, several factions can already do. Uh, without having to have weird conditionals. A 4-3 for 3 is not good. Um, so, again, maybe in Zoo this makes sense. Otherwise, not so much. Uh, maybe in very budget aggro. Uh, Bloodshard Golem, 5-3. Better Golem to rush out, but still, eh, generally you want the thick Golems, not the FD Golems. I don't know, I'm trying here. Higher health. Uh, Canon of Mechazor, also usually played in Mechazor builds. Generally, in Mechazor builds, if you're playing Mechazord stuff, you play the cheap Mechazor stuff because you want to get them out as soon as freaking possible. You don't want to play like, oh, I'll play the 5 drop. No, you want to play 3-1 drops, 3-2 drops, and 3-3 drops. Uh, and if you're playing 3 drops, you probably don't play this one because there's a better one coming up. Still, if you're doing a Mechazor deck, he might make it. Um, Chaos Elemental. When this survives damage, it teleports to a random space. Maybe there's some cool reason to play this. I don't know what it is. I swear there used to be a card that made this like a combo finisher where like you did one damage to the enemy or two damage to the enemy general every time something teleported or moved or something. But as it is, I have no idea what you would do with this. It's got a decent stat line though. Um, Crimson Mock, crim and the fact that it teleports means it might survive a turn. So if you're like looking for buffs, maybe it's good. Crimson Mock, crim Crimson Oculus. Great counter to Abyss, great counter to Zoo. Um, decent counter to uh, the, 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 the Truvian as well. This can get out of control really, really fast. So if you're seeing those things in your meta, consider slotting this in. Uh, cannot attack minions, 3-2. I'm really not a fan. Um, I don't think Provoke is that good, especially for, like, a Lord, and the stats are okay, so, eh. I think this card is overrated, but she is the core of Zoo decks, or one of the cores of Zoo decks, so if you want to do Zoo, there you go. Is an Arcanist, players replace cards from their opponent's deck? I always thought this was interesting, because I don't know what deck it goes in, but as a tech choice, if you've got a really consistent and simple deck, 
and your opponent's digging for an answer, like a sweeper, and now they're digging through your deck for the sweeper, and you don't have sweepers, then this is pretty good tech. You know, like if you're running against a Magmar and you're running a zoo deck, I would consider running this because they can't replace into their, you know, Plasma Storm and kill you. They now have to draw it the old-fashioned way. Obviously, it's less good versus decks that can draw a lot, um, like Spell uh, Song High, the Vitruvian, Abyssian in some cases, but maybe this has use. Um, another common version of the Zoo deck, uh, three drop that buffs your stuff, who knew? I think this probably has something that fits in where it's really, really good. I just don't know what it is. So obviously this effect is very powerful. Um, drop this with Magmar, you can play the three drop that makes this a seven five. It will probably survive its first turn and then go kill things. Uh, that said, it does seem gimmicky to me. So it's just, it's a lot of health for three mana. So maybe in Divine Bond as well, where you don't care that it's a zero, it's just bonus points. Yeah, I'd probably run this in Divine Bond at the very least. Um, I probably should run it in Divine Bond. I know, for the record, it didn't used to have that effect, so I, I'm theory crafting it all right now. Uh, this was good in any sort of like spellcaster deck, uh, where you sling a lot of spells, especially if you don't have some of the traditional curve toppers. I think it's often outclassed by other curve toppers because it's so easy for this to die to like every sweeper in the game and then just be blanked. But if you don't have the you know better curve toppers, this is this doesn't a pinch. Um, I gotta be honest, I have no idea what's the uh, D divine bond. Maybe like uh, this is such a weird list of effects. I probably wouldn't play this even then. Uh, Repulsor Beast, budget removal, teleporting a nearby enemy to an en any space is basically saying, hey, goodbye. Uh, it can get provoked stuff out of your way. It can get their minion that's about to murder you go gone. Um, probably don't play it and have everything land, but it's not bad removal. And again, it gives you a body. So a lot of these like budget options where it's like, oh, well, I could be playing... Um... Is there a card that actually does this effect? I don't know. Point is, I could be playing like Magnetize or something else, but this gives me a body... It still will do something on the board. It's still very useful. Saber Spine Tiger is a curve topper in some decks, and it's great because it's the lowest cost rush creature uh, that's in neutral. So at five mana, I can drop a buff on this um, and play this from hand and deal five, eight, ten damage depending on the faction and what I'm dropping on them. And okay, maybe probably higher mana. Um, and that ends the game. So think of this as removal. It's a three mana removal spell. Uh, I don't know how many decks it fits in in Have Everything Land, but it absolutely was a staple of most of my real decks when I had a real collection and didn't have everything. I I keep thinking about this card whenever I see it because I didn't think it had that effect. I guess the interesting upside is, especially if your opponent's creature base, they cannot remove this unless you choose to attack with it. So if you're a buff-based deck, maybe I've been undervaluing this card. Um, Divine Bond, Magmar, Vanar, you know, you get to play this, and then they have to waste a removal spell on it. And that also then saves it, for, saves something better later from, uh, that removal spell, because you get to choose when it dies, in theory, but then again, like, you know, Songhai just Phoenix fires this. So, I don't know, it's, it's, or, you know, they Tempest it, and then it dies. I, I suspect this is bad, but maybe there's something cool. Uh, Sarlacc the Eternal, really, really good. Goes in almost all control decks. Very good in Abyss. Very good in um, Magmar. Because Abyss is great in, like, he's an automatic 3 of an any Abyss control because you can you want dying effects. But he also gives you a bunch of incremental advantage over the course of the game and keeps a body on the board that you can buff unless they dispel him and then they can kill him for real. Um, it sucks if he gets dispelled because now you have a 3 mono 1-1. One, one. That's terrible. But at least it ate a Dispel card, and it's going to do something before it dies. And if they don't answer it, it really adds up. Now, you might get unlucky on the Teleports, but often enough, it's still useful. It may not be exactly what you want, but like, oh, wait, now I can move them and summon where I couldn't before. Or, oh, you know what? I can block their movement, or I can block them from doing a thing here. He's really good. Uh, I, I have no idea. I, I, you know, Divine Bond? Uh, if I, like, if I were a budget Divine Bond, yeah, I'd play this in a heartbeat, but I'm not sure where else you play this. Because um, you could, like, drop this behind that airdrop 10-3, or 10-5, is it? 
um, whatever it is, and then put this behind it. And now they even they'll they'll be provoked, and they can't hit this guy. And if they do hit that guy, his health is still t at ten, so you can divine bond for ten. Um, Sojourner, put a random card in your action bar. This seems awful. I think it means any random card, like anywhere in the game. Um, I don't even know if it means like it has to be from your deck or if it's from any card at all. Uh, no idea. Uh, someone test it. Have fun. Spell Jammer, 2-4. Players draw one fear card at the end of their turn. I love tax effects. I Death and Taxes Modern is like one of my favorite decks ever. Um, that said, I don't know how this works. Uh, I've always felt that it's kind of questionable because like a lot of these taxing effects, you harm yourself first. So you draw one less card in your turn, and then your opponent removes this and draws two. And you're like, oh, well, what did I do? Um, so yeah, I don't know how to make this work. I think it's risky. Good luck to anyone who tries. Um, if you're doing heal synergy and like Lionar, this makes sense. Um, healing is good, but this is a weird way to heal because it has to survive to heal. It's not a guaranteed heal. Maybe in like a janky Songhai solution where you like give this haste and get healed because like, oh, it's a Songhai mirror. I could see running him there. Uh, Sword of Megazord. This is the three drop Megazord that you run um, because three, three for three is good stats and Frenzy is a great effect. Um, Spell High, or sorry, Song High loves to run this because they can give it haste and just this is their AoE from hand because they don't have really great built in AoE. Uh, but otherwise, it's still a good card. It's just solid. Um, he was often in my budget decks. I don't think this is good. Uh, end of discussion. I Maybe there's something clever here where like you combo by hurting yourself, but I doubt it. I don't think this is good. 1-4 uh, is kind of a crummy stat line, and moving minions closer is kind of a crummy effect. You usually don't have to try that hard to get things where you want. Um, this is a counter to Zoo and other such decks. It is usually used in aggro decks as a way to like help close out the game. Like It's higher curve for aggro, so you start playing these, and the opponent's like, crud, I can clear the board. Like Obviously, this can really screw over like Abyssian or Vitruvian, who love to swarm the board. Um, but this can also just, uh, stop enemies from murdering you for other reasons. I swear this got played, but at the same time, I swear it then stopped getting played. Um, this seems like it's powerful, but he's got a really crummy stat line, and it's really easy for this to brick and just kill the two cards that you drew because your hand's already full. So, I could see this in budget decks where you don't have draw effects and you want to try and play control and you need the tempo, but be careful with this. Uh, zoo deck curve topper. Um, I don't know. It 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 seems okay. Uh, three three for three. Okay. Uh, three three for three flying. When you replace a card, this game's plus two plus zero this turn. Maybe that's good. Again, the mecha sword card's playable, but it does AOE damage. This maybe does five damage that turn. There is maybe a replace deck. There's always been that kind of synergy. So if you want to try to replace deck, yeah, maybe then you can get you know plus four plus six on this guy. But otherwise, I'm kind of yeah. Obviously, this guy goes in artifact decks. It is good in artifact decks, usually there's one or a two of, to get an artifact to hand. You're like, okay, I need to draw one of the artifacts. You play this, it gets one of them. You're like, okay, cool, I can do something now. Um, kind of a game ender, and uh, that you try to play them, like, if they don't have a sweeper and this sticks, like, most sweepers answer this, no matter how many of them you, you have. But it can also take over the game really, really fast. So if you want to mess with it, go for it. It's a fun card, but it's not quite as good as it looks. Um... Uh, again, maybe for healing synergy stuff uh, with Lionar, but outside of that, I the fact that it heals for the damage, it, like, yeah, who cares? Um, Chasis, uh, it has Veil, which means it can't be targeted by spells, but it's a 5-4 for 4, four, which is, eh, I'd rather have it be a 4-5. Because, um, like, two 2-attack two creatures trade into this, and they would have died anyways, so cool. Uh I usually don't run this, even in Mechazord decks. I don't think this gets run. Um, it's just too slow. Cinder Beast, at the start of your turn, deal one damage to both generals. Curve Topper for budget aggro. Um, you know, there's some certain synergies this can enable. There's a couple of combos this can enable with, like, um, uh, things that trigger when the generals take damage. Uh, Diltus looks fun, because it's like, oh, when he dies, he summons this tombstone. And there's some gimmicky junk you can do with him, but in general, he's not very good. Uh, I'll just tell you right now. Emerald Rejuvenator, a three of in so many decks. If you're not playing aggro, low to the ground junk, you probably want three of these. A 4-4 four, four for four is a great stat line. And, and, healing for four is huge. Again, 
this is how you get to late game. When you're like, oh my god, aggro is unstoppable in this game because they get to draw two cards in every turn. They just run you over, put three of this in your deck. It will change your life. It is so easy to trigger this. It is so easy to trigger it multiple times. The kind of decks that are probably giving you trouble don't trade into it well. It is a very, very, very good card. If you don't know what you're doing, put three of this in your deck to start, and you're probably off to a good start. And if your deck doesn't have him, it's probably better than three of your cards. Um, unless you know, like if you're struggling anyways. If you know what you're doing, fine, ignore me. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's probably better than three of your cards. Uh, this is useful for certain decks that have trouble getting sweepers or sweepers that are easier to trigger. So that's when you play it. Um, this is a very good golem, especially in Divine Bond decks. I play this in budget decks all the time. Uh, it can really annoy people. 4-6 is a great stat line for four. Uh, Hollow Grove Keeper, um, give nearby allies Provoke. Honestly, I think this is pretty trash. Um, provoke is way overrated. Um, giving lots of things Provoke is actually not what you want to do with Provoke. Um, so I would say probably not worth using. Keeper of the Veil. I've seen so much janky combo stuff with this guy because I don't think he used to do this. Uh, that said, it does seem legit. So if you want to start brewing around this and like, oh, what other things can I do and how do I get them back to their full health and can I do this, can I do that, or can I do these loops? Have fun. Not my style. Um, AoE Dispel. It's not as good because most factions have some option to dispel and I prefer to run Ephemeral Shroud at 2 than trying to run this at 4 uh, because it'll dispel your own stuff too. And targeting one space versus targeting four spaces around this gets kind of risky, uh, but it's still good. Uh, I don't believe in Arcanist Synergy, so 4-4 for four, 4 four, four, that does, in my opinion, nothing. Um, well, maybe it buffs him to a 4-6. If it buffs him to a 4-6, then he's just a better golem, so I'm assuming that's not the case. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to try Arcanists, good luck. Um, Shieldmaster, not bad. I played him in Divine Bond, um, budget, and I played him as a, like, you know what, I'm getting murdered by uh, a lot of aggro. He trades really, really well into a lot of aggro's favorite toys. Um, yeah, uh, I gotta be honest, I feel like this is generally overrated, or, or a noob trap. Um, I think there's decks that this works in, I wouldn't mind playing this in, again, a budget deck, but at the same time, if I have a choice, I'm gonna pick something else, because 2-7 is just such an awkward stat line. Uh, Magmar probably removes this for free, three different ways. Um, you know, it just, eh, eh Divine Bond. Silhouette Tracer, Silhouette Tracer, excuse me, words. Um, teleport your general up to four spaces. This is actually really good. Uh, at first you're like, well, why would anyone play this? But 2-6 is a pretty good stat line. Um, I should just said after, oh, two sudden well. But the opening gambit is why. Um, being able to move your general four spaces teleported gets you out of jams, uh, gets you away from the enemy in a way that they can't chase you. It can buy you a turn, or it can help you get to where you can like, oh, and then I summon this and kill you, or then I punch you in the face and kill you. It is actually a great tech card. Um, I wouldn't usually run three unless I've got some really crazy deck going on, but two of, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, if you want to build around that, let me know by all means. Otherwise, I'm going to say it's a trap. Uh, minion spell artifact. Maybe Vitruvian, but even then I feel like, am I really, like you've got to be low to the ground because drawing three cards plus the two cards at the end means you really want to be dumping your hand while you do this. Boy, I don't know. That seems so janky. Uh, plus two, minus one at the end of your turn. Um, yeah, that's cool. I don't, I don't know what, I, I, I don't know. I, again, Divine Bond, like, because it becomes a three, six, and then you make it a nine, six, and then you win, right? Um. Tethermancer, refresh all monotones. There's probably some really smart people who can make this work and do cool things. Because uh, to be fair, what you can do is you'll know the monotones are going to come back and your opponent doesn't, so you'll be ready to take advantage of them and do some crazy play. But that means that this basically costs one for two six in the ideal scenario, because you have three creatures on board to take the monotones. I don't know that that's always the case, so careful with this, because it could obviously massively backfire. Thorn Needle, when this takes damage, it gains plus one, plus oh. I, uh, maybe in Magmar, because uh, Magmar already has, like, budget Magmar, this seems like it would be playable. Magmar already has a bunch of options there. Um, White Widow, when you replace a card, deal two damage split randomly among enemies. Um, again, there's that replace synergy thing. I don't think you play this otherwise, but if you were, like, budget, and you're just like, I need a four drop, it's not bad. Five four with flying at four. 
eh, personally. Again, I think I don't value flying very highly. It's not that great. Um, Ash Mephit, getting three bodies for five of two threes is powerful in some decks. Now, again, this gets countered by Magmar immediately with Plasma Storm, um, but it does survive Tempest. So I think, yeah, as a budget curve topper or even in certain decks, there's reasons to play this. I absolutely play this as a budget curve topper in a ton of decks, and especially my Divine Bond deck. It's a good card. Um, it uh, Being able to turn this into an 11-9 or threaten that is good, and especially if you get the turn four out. That said, it probably doesn't go in any deck where I have access to everything. Uh, Dagger Kiri, I absolutely ran him as a curve topper for Songhai because they have the ability to teleport him and buff him, and now he's like at least doing six damage, and they have the ability to buff him even more, where like you know they can make him do ten or even uh, sixteen damage with just two cards and two mana. It's pretty crazy. So he works very well there. Other buffers can make him do lots of work as well, like Divine Bond, again, you know, that 20 damage, for, if he doesn't take any damage on the turn before and he can get in range. Um, that said, I wouldn't run a ton ever. I'd probably only ever run one or two. Uh, Dancing Blades, great card, great card. If you're running, like, you're like, ah, I'm doing a middle range game or something, put three of these in. You probably won't go wrong. Uh, there's very few cards that are better than this card in the five drop slot. Great stat line, wonderful opening effect that gives you a ton of tempo run these like again if you like if, if you don't know what you're doing put three healing mystics three emerald rejuvenators and three dancing blades in your deck and then build around that um this is a build around because these guys have rush so it basically makes your spells deal an extra one damage with a body uh i know there were some cool combo decks that like tried to buff these and whatnot i have no idea if they're really viable um healing nearby allies for two is interesting because that will heal generals so maybe this is good it's a guarantee it's ranged to i don't know this might be legit and that like you drop it behind your general heal two and now you have a threat that if they don't deal with it heals two again and again but five mana gets wiped by magmar is risky um rogue warden three four plus one three here by alby i think it's trash that's way too much it, this just isn't cost of well sworn depender four five gains plus one for each nearby and eh, i think it's probably trash again maybe it, obviously this is a wonderful anti-zoo tech I'm like, oh, wow, this thing's going to be just huge. But outside of that, eh. Um, gains plus one for each card in your opponent's action bar. I think this is a obvious tech choice. Uh, if there's a lot of control, then this is great, because this could be a five mana nine nine. Um, if there's not a lot of control, this is terrible, because it's a five mana three free. So, you know, even then, probably one or two up tops. Uh, put a copy of a random spell you've played into your action bar. This is a little more targeted than that other random card thing. Uh, probably pretty good in control decks. Like, you know, Magmar, any spell I've played, I'm fine getting back. Um, so this is good. This guy has a lot of brutal combos. Uh, I think it's with Vitruvian that I forgot to mention that there's a card that... Yeah. So for what, five mana, you steal an enemy minion. Because uh, you set their attack to zero... And then you play any day now. Him. Sorry, for six mana. You set their attack to zero, then you play him, and you steal whatever they had. Um, and he has a lot of good things that he does steal that work. So if you want to build around this guy or include him as a tech call, he's good. Absolutely a great control finisher. If your in-faction control stuff doesn't look too great and you want to try control, throw these in. They're great. Um, that stat line's just gross. And of course, like all your removal costs more to deal with it. Uh, I don't think this is good. Like, 6 mana, 210. It, it, it's just, Provoke is not that good. The effect is not that good. Maybe if this hurt generals too. Uh, or enemy generals too. Enemy units instead of minions. But as it stands, not impressed. Uh, Death Blighter, Prevent All Healing. I can see it as like a curve topper for a budget aggro deck. Where it's just like, I need to stop them from healing. Um, if they... You know, they've already played one Emerald Rejuvenator. I can damage through that, but I want to stop them from playing the two, the second and third one. So I dropped this guy. Um, that said, I don't recall that effect, and I've never tested it. Eclipse, uh, when this takes damage, deal that much damage to the enemy general. I mean, I don't think it's good. It looks like it's good, but again, a six mana gets wiped by Magmar removal. That's a big, big, big concern. Um, and the stats are weird. I don't think it's good. 
budget zoo deck curve hopper i'm pretty sure that's what i played it as i probably wouldn't play it otherwise um just because like oh well plus one is okay jack's absolutely very good he makes four of these guys one in each corner uh, it can be really hard for some decks to deal with them. Like, do you have your removal? Do you have your sweeper now? Because otherwise I've got at least four damage. Well, maybe three, maybe two worst case on the board next turn. Um, and I'm going to probably be able to buff one of them because I'm playing a Jax. You know, it's very good. Uh, Serpenti. Uh, this was, I believe, in the running for the worst card in the game. This is the, like, Chimney Imp of the World or whatever you want to be familiar with. Or War Golem. Um... It's uh, it's not good. I have played it. It's not as bad as it looks. It, uh, I played it in Vitruvian because it was easy to buff its toughness and give it flying. Um, and then it's like, oh, it's a controllable sweeper, and most people don't bother to remove Serpenti because it's Serpenti. Uh, but yeah, I pro this probably never gets played in Have Everything World. Uh, Storm Arafa. Uh, I feel like this is new. It's attacks an enemy, deal three damage to enemies nearby that enemy. I don't know. Um, it's kind of a weird sweeper and a burn. Maybe I'm not giving enough credit. It's it's like gimmick frenzy in a way. I think I would test it. I think it could be good. Storm Metal Golem, 6 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight, not bad. Divine Bond deck, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, you can get them out turn 5 with the other thing, or even earlier with some Magmar stuff. So it's a pile of stats. Pile of stats are not bad in this game, because... The heavier targeted removal, again, it depends on who you're playing, but like, I didn't mind running these when I had to. I got them out pretty early, but I didn't mind them. Uh, his effect, I'm pretty sure, is new. When this attacks an enemy minion, deal excess damage dealt to the enemy general. I could see this working. Um, it's got a lot of attack, and there's a lot of ways to buff creatures in this game, absurdly high. And the idea that I can remove a minion and deal the excess to a general is kind of a very janky um, Abyssian Revenant. Um, so I would absolutely try running this. Oops, skipped a page. Uh, Astral Crusader, 612 at the start of each turn, switch positions with both generals. It's a weird stat line. It's a weird effect. I mean, I, yeah, I, it, it's because it's at the start of each turn. So you play this, and then on your opponent's turn, they swap places with you. But then when it's your turn again, you swap back. So it's very strange i guess it kind of keeps the opponent in the same spot like they can't get away from the spot that they were on their previous turn because they're going to teleport back on the start of your turn i, I let me put it this way I, I someone smarter than me can probably make this work uh control finisher who's not bad at all just always dealing four damage to the en uh, enemy general is great and he gets stronger and stronger eh, uh, uh, the more the higher the mana you spend for your pile of stats, the worse it gets. This is getting pretty high, but at least it's competitive, like 10 10 serious. Um, good in certain kinds of decks with like rush and whatnot, because you can play your rush creatures and get them like celerity, which is the main one you want here, or frenzy, which is the other okay one. Um, Pato, cool animation, terrible card. Uh, seven mana airdrop teleport things around. I might be useful as like this weird janky removal. But for 7 mana, I'm pretty sure I could have done something better. Um, Pandora, absolutely great control finisher. Uh, 310, hard to remove, does die to Magmar, but she generates units every turn. So yes, a Magmar thing removes it, but it, it, she otherwise wins the game. Like, it's not, oh, well, I got removed and now I'm screwed. It's deal with this or I win. 7-7, um, seven, seven, general takes damage. to steal 7 damage to a random nearby enemy minion. Uh, quite powerful. 7-7 seven, seven moves forward. This is a new effect. I've never seen it. I think it could be used, though. I have no idea where you play this, except maybe Budget Divine Bond. Um, or if you're just, you're so sick of, you know, like certain spell decks that have just been wrecking you or control decks. A lot of targeted removal. But, I mean, it dies to Magmar Sweepers. So, uh, um, I think this is generally trash. But, I mean, random token minion. There's a lot of interesting tokens. Maybe it works. I don't know. Good luck. At least it doesn't die to Magmar. Um, and then Zuriel, the Life Giver, uh, some other allied minions that were destroyed since your last turn on the random spaces. So like, what you run this like as a one or a two of, and then you crash in all your control creatures that you've managed to keep alive so far, and then they all come back. Um, so yeah, it's uh, and it's since your last turn, so this can undo a sweeper effect. So yeah, it, it for, but it's nine mana. You're playing nothing else with this guy. So it's got to, I, I wouldn't run more than one or two. All right. 
I believe that's it. That's all the neutrals. That's all the cards. I've now done a review of everything. Um, I am not the best player in the world, but I think this is one of the best card games I've ever played by far. So I highly recommend you give it a try, try to get into the playtest, and I hope they at least keep the quasi-fair model the game started with. I hope they do a more fair model. That would be even better. Uh, and, you know, I hope this game ends up well. Have fun.